to a more contemporary looking for that time um, to, you know, an earlier, this is what, a, an English Regency mirror. So this piece is showing a mix of styles which is indicating what's going to be coming in. Now the other man who was important in this is Oscar Wilde, who if you know his name, you know him as a writer for things like The Importance of Being Earnest and the Portrait of Dorian Gray. He was also an aesthetic, as you can maybe see. He always wore a big fluffy, fluffy bow tie. Um, he was also, well, he was also thrown to jail for um, improper sexual behavior, but that was another story. He was a very, very well-received lecturer. And he toured the United States in the early 1800, the late 1850s went to major cities and gave lectures on the aesthetic movement, on beautiful being important. You can't see the full ca uh, caption of this teapot, but what it was making a joke of his comment about his having to live up to his teapot. When he died, apparently on his be deathbed, he made a comment about wanting to, be, wanting to be worthy of all the things with which he wanted to surround himself. So this is, he's saying, it's a beautiful teapot, and she said, let's live up to it. Uh, <clears throat> this was, the aesthetics were the most important thing. Christopher Dresser wrote a book called, what, the, uh, about interior decoration. And he was, this was um, another one of the books trying to guide people in terms of what would be good taste. And he designed what are considered some of the first objects of industrial design. In a way, he went out and marketed his designs to manufacturers. So instead of just designing in his own studio, he presented things and had them accepted. So that his most famous design, oh, I can never remember the name of his book. His book is Principles of Decorative Design. This is in case, I think I have it in the vocabulary list, those of you interested, and depending on what you want to do uh, in terms of a report, perhaps, in terms of extra reading, you might want to look at a couple of these old books, like Dresser and, uh, and the earlier one, and the later ones I may mention. OK, a vase. For, incidentally, I would consider that an extra credit project, which I didn't talk about, which I didn't mention. but reading some of the old design books would be equally valid as going to exhibition. Okay, this is not, um, you see the similarity. He took stylized flowers like this and he took motifs that now we would look at and I'd say this reminds me of Art Deco. And this is a big fat, actually an oversized cup, it's small for a vase. For Wedgwood, this is on record as the first time that Wedgwood bought something from an outside designer. The glass vase, I don't know who he did that for. This is, the toast rack is perhaps his most famous object. He did a series of toast racks. Toasting, you know, toasted bread was a new deal. A, um, a toaster, not certainly an electric toaster yet, but you toasted objects and you stacked up all of the slices of toast and carried them to the table this way. And the toast rack, this was uh, silver, as was this decanter. One of the most elaborate series of interiors in the aesthetic movement is Cardiff Castle done for Lord Bute by William Burgess, the architect. And what you see here, I was hoping you could see it better than you can in reality, but all the, uh, the other images I have are black and white. This has the muddy colors characteristic of the Victorian era. It's better calling it an era or a period in a way, but it's not defined the way the classical and 18th century periods are. Um, it was, as I said, the larger part of the 18th century, the 19th century, and a variety of styles. What he had here is largely Gothic, but he's mixing Moorish and exotic style, Moorish and exotic. 
And you can say um, the aesthetic movement included Asian, Moorish, anything that they considered exotic at the time. Uh, nobody nowadays is going to say this is beautiful, but it's very, very characteristic of what would have been acceptable then. And this one, now this is a recent photograph. What you're looking at, every surface decorated. Now I said that about Baroque, but every surface there was decorated by hand, and that was at a time when things were done for royalty. This was, yes, this was a lord, and this was a very expensive interior, but this is also the kind of thing that people tried to emulate by, you know, wallpaper in the walls full of pattern. Um, this is a wonderful piece in its excess, and William Burgess did a couple of those. Um, I don't remember whether Yatman was the name of the owner or somebody he wanted to honor, but I'm showing it because it's his most famous piece, and because you can see, if you look carefully, all of the painting on it is drawn from medieval times. Charles Eastlake, I should have put this earlier, but I had already done the, I had done the chronology before I, and then added some dates. But his on household taste is probably the most famous early decorating book written. And this was not saying this is what you should design. The style is called, or oh, maybe we call it modern Gothic. They call it modern Gothic because it's not quite aesthetic movement. It very firmly emulates the Gothic style. And it also inspired what was in America called East Lake style furniture. And I'll talk about that a little more. But um, it was 1867 in London, in England. It was published in 1870. Or in two or four in America, a few years later, it became overwhelmingly popular in America, even much more. It was influential in England, but in America we had, maybe we felt we had more of a need for someone to tell us how to do our homes. Uh, Eastlake was not a furniture designer. This was an illustration from his book, but people adapted his ideas to designs most of which he didn't approve of. He thought his like style was really overdone. What it was was layers of, with modern machinery, you could cut out flat pieces of wood in any number of designs and slap them onto the surface of the piece of furniture. So you got um, 